Good morning, everyone, everywhere, and welcome to Worship with Homer United Methodist Church. Today, we conclude our series called Whole, in which we have been exploring the many ways that Jesus heals. We learned that in biblical Greek, the word for salvation also means wholeness. And so when we think about the ways that Jesus saves, part of that salvation is making us whole. We've also learned that curing and healing are two different things and that we can be healed even if we're not technically cured. We've also seen that healing is not just individual. It's also communal as whole families and communities benefit from healing. And we're going to explore more of the communal aspect of healing today. We've also learned that there are a wide variety of maladies, physical, emotional, and spiritual, that Jesus heals. And part of the healing that we need as a country and even as a church right now is cultural healing. As we consider the history of the genocide of indigenous peoples and the destruction of their culture, as well as the enslavement of black people in the United States, we recognize that we need healing, that racism is a wound that still festers in our country. And one part of healing is acknowledgement and confession. We need to reflect on history and the role that various groups, including the church, played in the harm done to others. One small step that we can take in that journey of healing is to acknowledge the sovereignty of the indigenous people on whose land we live and work and worship. Here in Homer, we live on the land of the Nanilchik Village Tribe. According to their website, the Nanilchik Village Tribe traces its roots to the ancient indigenous people of the southern Kenai Peninsula. Original settlements in tribal lands were made by Denina people. Among Athabascan cultures in Alaska, Denina is unique because it is the only group to have made permanent coastal settlements and developed prominent maritime traditions. As a long-term visitor on the land of the Nanilchik village tribe, I am grateful for their stewardship of this incredible place from time immemorial and into the future. I invite you to take a moment to offer a prayer of gratitude and appreciation for the indigenous people who steward the land that you call home. Let us pray together. This prayer is a responsive prayer. So when I indicate, please respond with the words, breathe on me, O God, and make me whole. O Lord, you are indeed the healer of all our ills. We bring to you, Lord, our bodies, minds, and spirits hurting and broken by the violence, ills, trauma, and cares of a world separated from you. Send your life-giving spirit so that we may live our lives with courage in the profound peace of your love. Come to us now with your healing powers. Breathe on me, O oh God, and make me whole. O oh God, we ask that you sustain those who seek to alleviate the pain and suffering of this world. Give strength, courage, wisdom, and knowledge to all doctors and nurses, orderlies and clerks, psychiatrists, researchers, scientists, and all other medical caregivers, volunteers, and professionals. Send your life-giving spirit so that their ministries may bring healing and promote wellness. Come to us now with your healing powers. Breathe on me, O oh God, and make me whole. Be also with those who work to heal the wounds of societies and nations. Guide, protect, and strengthen lawyers and police, chaplains and pastors, healthcare and social workers, politicians, military diplomats, and all others who work for economic and social reform. Send your life-giving spirit that they may promote your love and grace. 
bringing healing and peace to those in conflict and stability to those who are vulnerable. Come to us now with your healing powers. Breathe on me, O oh God, and make me whole. God so loved the world and the people that God sent Christ to die and to rise for us. Accept now God's gift of healing and wholeness. Know that you are forgiven, reconciled, accepted, and loved. Breathe on us, O oh God, and make us whole. Amen. Pray with me. By your Holy Spirit, O God, open our ears, our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to your holy word who brings salvation and wholeness to all. Amen. I'm reading today from Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, as it was reported that he was at home, so many gathered around that there was no longer room for them, not even in front of the door, and he was speaking the words to them. Then some people came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. And when they could not bring him to Jesus, because of the crowd, they removed the roof roof above him, and after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were there, sitting there, questioning in their hearts, Why does this fellow speak this way? It is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? At once, Jesus perceived in his spirit that they were discussing these questions among themselves. And he said to them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Stand up and take your mat and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, Stand up, take your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took the mat and went out before all of them, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. This is the word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God.
There was a great article in the Anchorage Daily News on Thursday called Ice Hearts Bring Warmth to East Anchorage Just in Time for Valentine's Day. Journalist Emily Mesner wrote this article about a neighborhood in the Cheney Lake area of Anchorage. I know Cheney Lake well. I used to teach at a school nearby and I have had many a school picnic on that lake shore. So I loved to hear how this neighborhood was reaching out to each other in creative and beautiful ways. Mesner reports that what started as a way to brighten up the darkest month of the year has evolved into a grassroots neighborhood effort to keep spreading joy long after winter solstice. One of the locals in the Cheney Lake area named Chantel Pence came up with this idea around the solstice because she wanted to lift the spirits of her neighbors. And so she created a display outside her backyard gate, which connects to the Cheney Lake trail system. She put out an ice luminaria and she painted a sign that said, be the light. And every night for a week, she lighted the luminaria in the evening. But Mesner reports that one day Chantel Pence got busy and forgot to light the candle and didn't think about it again until bedtime. But when she looked out the window, she saw that the candle was already lit. Every night after that, someone else walking by lighted the candle in the luminaria. It started to become a community project. She said that people would stop by and take pictures and leave candles and ornaments and cards. And then other neighbors who also lived on the trail started putting out their own luminaria. And on solstice, they held a neighborhood light up the lakeside event when they all lighted the candles together. In this new year, Chantel Pence and the neighborhood has continued to maintain their displays, but now they've switched to a Valentine's Day theme. I'm gonna show you some pictures of how their neighborhood looks. All of these photos were taken by journalist Emily Messner. Messner reports that on the edge of the trail by Chantel Pence's backyard, a sheet of ice is propped up in front of a candle and the word love is spelled out with twigs from a willow tree written above a heart made of cranberries. This inspired her neighbors as well and one of her other neighbors also started making luminaria and she put those out along the trail and more and more neighbors have joined in and added more hearts and more lights along the trail. And Chantel Pence says that one thing that she's noticed is more eye contact, more visiting, more positivity. She says this, there are so many ways that we can create community. I met so many people, neighbors that I've lived beside for three years now that I didn't know. We're collectively working on something to bring joy to the neighborhood. We're doing it separately, but together. In this time of pandemic, in this time of physical distancing and social isolation, in this time of political division and divisive rhetoric, we are all in need of healing. And that healing is not just individual, it's communal. We see from this example in Anchorage how one small act by one single person has helped to brighten up people's lives. Small, simple acts of creativity and beauty brighten people's days and make them feel connected to each other, even though they're far apart. Too often, when we talk about healing, we speak individualistically, as if healing is for me and me alone, as if it's about my illness, my complaints, my pain, my issues, my distress. But we see in our scripture today that healing is not just about a single person. It's about a community. In the story, we have Jesus once again surrounded by crowds who are seeking healing. Crowds so thick in the house that no one else can fit through the door. And some more people came. Some people with a friend who was paralyzed, laying on a mat that was carried by four of them. 
And the house was so crowded that they couldn't get inside the door. But those friends would not be deterred. They had someone in need of healing and they were not going to let the crowd stand in their way. So they climbed up on the roof of the house over to the spot where Jesus was standing below. They pulled back the thatch, they broke through the mud, and they lowered their friend down in front of Jesus. Then the scripture says, when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, son, your sins are forgiven. Did you catch that? The scripture said, when Jesus saw their faith, not his faith, not the sick man's faith, but when Jesus saw their faith, the faith of his friends, he was forgiven and healed. We don't know anything about this man except for his condition. We don't know if he was a good guy or not. We don't know anything about his own personal faith. But we know that his friends were so determined to put him in front of Jesus. And they were so sure that Jesus could heal him that they were going to tear that house down. Regardless of the faith of the man, he was saved. He was made whole. He was healed because of the faith of his friends. Just as there is collective sin, there's also collective salvation. The actions of the friends determined that man's healing and wholeness. One of the things that's so hard about this pandemic is that we are apart and we want to be together. We are a community, a collective, a church, and we are better together. Our faith is better together. Our ministry is better together. Our burdens are easier to bear together. And our faith helps us hold each other up when we're too weak to stand on our own. When we lose faith, when we struggle with doubt, when we're worn out by all that life, has thrown at us when we're ground down by grief and heartache our community our congregation our church is our lifeline when we can't hold on to faith ourselves anymore we keep the faith for each other that man's friends believed that he was worthy of healing that he was worthy of wholeness, that he was worthy of salvation. And because they believed in his worth and because they had faith that Jesus could heal, Jesus did heal. That's what we do for each other. When we are stuck in sin or grief or illness or pain, whether it's emotional or physical or mental or spiritual, we hold each other up. We carry each other. We don't let go. We pray for each other. We help each other. We hold on tight. And when we have to, we pull the roof down to get people the care that they need. If you feel like you yourself are not worthy of healing and wholeness. Know that I believe you are. And your church family believes that you are. It's not just your faith alone that Jesus sees, but our collective faith, our communal support, our combined love. Jesus doesn't just see your faith. He sees the faith of your friends and he heals. Today is Valentine's Day. And what better scripture could we read than of a person whose friends loved him so much that their faith made him whole.
May we love each other likewise. May we love each other that much. For the last time in this series, I want to remind you that Jesus loves you just the way you are. But Jesus does not leave you the way you are. Whatever possesses you, whatever distracts you, whatever ails you, Jesus heals. Amen. Please pray with me the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for your continued generosity. Your gifts and donations help support the missions and ministries of the church. Today, I want to share with you a thank you letter from our Alaska United Methodist Conference Superintendent, Carlo Rapinu, who writes to us this, Dear Partners in Ministry, Thank you for fulfilling 100% of your covenant of missional giving with the Alaska United Methodist Conference through your apportionment dollars. You are an essential part of the ministry of the United Methodist Church and of God's work in and through our conference. I thank God for your faith and continuing commitment to our shared ministry. Superintendent Rapinut goes on to acknowledge how difficult the year 2020 was and what a challenge it was to meet all of our giving commitments. He also thanks us for helping do our part to limit the spread of the virus by meeting online, encouraging others to stay home, wear masks and keep 
distance. We pray that we will be together soon. He also affirms the many ways that we have reimagined our congregational life and found new and creative ways to stay connected. He writes, friends, you have given of yourselves and your gifts to support our common ministry. We who are in leadership commit to honor your sacrificial act of giving by making sure that these funds are used to continue resourcing vital ministry to benefit all and especially the least of these. We also stand committed to coming alongside you if and when the financial strain is no longer bearable and causing distress. Your fellow disciple, Carlo Rapinu. My friends, it was a difficult year, and yet your offerings allowed us to not just maintain our operational budget, but it allowed us to continue to serve our community in new and unique ways and allowed us to pay 100% of our apportionment giving, which is the way that we support the missions and ministries of the Alaska Conference as a whole and as the denomination around the world. Thank you so much for your generosity. If you would like to make a donation, please visit our online giving portal through our website below or send a check to the street address that you see on the screen. Your gifts make a real difference. You are God's beloved child. As God loves you, love others. As God forgives you, forgive others. As God heals you, heal others. Amen.